how we got to go all the way back. Everybody loved to just lie on Isaiah time. Right? It's just a cool thing to do. Because he's the guy that everybody want to select as the villain. Uh, dun, dun, dun. He the bad the guy. Parent. So what people want to do is make people the bad guy nowadays. That's it. Now, is everyone's hitting me up right now. Let me tell them all. I'm busy. Let's go through the whole thing. Let's go through this dream team situation one last time. So there'll be one video you guys can go to to get it all. And this will be it. Now, when the NBA made the decision that they were going to compete in Olympic competition, the criteria that were listed, because Isaiah Lord Thomas III is the president of the NBA's Players Association. So when the NBA has these discussions, he's on the staff. He's in those rooms. Okay, so he's not just making these things up. Because at the time, when they were making the decision that they're going in this route, is when NBC purchased it, they were two-time NBA defending world champions. So as they sat in the room with Isaiah and everyone else, they were listing the criteria for which the players would be selected. They were going to look at definitely championships, people who have won world titles, all-star appearances, all-stars, you know, definitely the longevity and those who were predominantly good enough to compete. All of these things Isaiah didn't have to worry about. He was already this is it. So when these selections were being made they were doing it at the end of the 91 season. when the selection committee was getting ready to make it official, right? This is a lie. And we're going to get through all of this right now. Dick Embersall purchases the television rights for the NBA, $600 million. And once he purchases the NBA television rights, as I told you, he said, I'm not doing this for the Detroit Pistons to be world champions. I'm buying the NBA television rights for Michael Jordan, which is rightfully so. And it's not like I have a problem with the Dream Team. I just have a problem with corruption. See, this all goes back to night 1991 or whatever. But FIBA, the World Basketball Association, FIBA, they took a vote in 1989. 89. Right? In 1989, the Pistons were world champions. And they allowed the NBA players into the Olympics. 
So now this was going to lead to a new system of choosing the men's basketball team. NBC had the rights to the Olympics, and they wanted to purchase the NBA so that they would have Michael Jordan and putting him in the Olympics. This is what Dick Embersall was leading up to. So they knew they had the broadcast rights for the Olympics. They had to have the league to showcase Michael Jordan and all the other players leading up to it, right? So the Barcelona games in 1992 was the first time there was going to be no tryouts to see who makes the Olympic team. It was going to be selected in a different format. Now, all of these things that's going on, you had... Um, the USA Basketball Committee. They had a two-year process to choose 12 players for the team. Right? What's his name? C.M. Newton. He was uh, at the University of Kentucky. He was the athletic director. He was an assistant coach of the um, 1984 Olympic team. And that included Rod Thorne, the Detroit Pistons general manager, Jack McCloskey. College coaches that was on there was Coach K and P.J. Carlissimo, and they were the assistants to Chuck Daly, the Detroit Pistons head coach. And for the NBA Player Association presence, that would have normally went to Isaiah Thomas since he wasn't playing in it, but there was no way Isaiah Thomas is going to be there in this format. They went with Charles Grantham. The committee was tasked to supposedly review the performances from 1990 to 91 and 1991 to 92 NBA seasons. That's what they said. Now, this was a lie and a detraction to try to explain the process. But if that was the case, that would eliminate Magic Johnson. That would eliminate probably Chris Mullen, Larry Bird, if you're doing that. Because if you're really doing that, then there's more people you could add to that selection of the list. But nevertheless... The first 10 members, they announced them on NBC on September the 21st in 91. And in the order that they were revealed to the public, Magic Johnson was the first name they said was going to play in the Dream Team Olympics. And Charles Barkley was the second name. Carl Malone was third. John Stockton was fourth. Patrick Ewing, then David Robinson, Larry Bird, Chris Mullen, Scottie Pippen, and Michael Jordan. Those were the first 10 revealed and named. That started a firestorm that never has been put out to this day, just announcing the 10 players. Because only one other player could go in from the NBA, and the other one had to go to a collegiate player. Now, this started a firestorm, and not just with Isaiah Thomas and them. This became a firestorm beyond comprehension. This was spreading like a wildfire because... Other players felt like, hell, I should have been in that first 10. So, of course, they said, well, Hakeem Olajuwon is from Africa. He wouldn't be allowed to play in, on the team, so can't put Hakeem on there. 
there was a lot of other names who people said should have made this list, including Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway at that time in 90 and 90, 91 and 92 probably played, was playing the best basketball of his career. It was in 90 and 91, 91 and 92. He averaged about 24 and 10 in those years. He wasn't selected. Michael Adams could have been one of the selection. And Tim Hardaway was a very popular point guard at the time. Kevin Johnson could have been another category or name that they brought to the table. But a very noticeable person that wasn't selected and was very offended by that, not being in the original 10, was Clyde the Glide Drexler. Yep. Clyde was highly upset at not being in the original 10 because if the criteria of what they gave didn't make any sense. He went to the NBA Finals and lost to the Detroit Pistons in 1990. In 91, they had the best record in the NBA and they went to the Western Conference Finals. In the second year, in 92, they played the Bulls in the NBA Finals. And there's no Hall of Famers on that team but Clyde. So, how was he not selected in the first 10 players? It didn't make sense. But then again, this list was selected not about achievements, not at all. This wasn't about achievements. This was about fandom. This was about popularity. This was about politics. Now let's rewind back. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to rewind it back before they made this announcement. Michael Jordan has stated after the playoffs was over, he didn't want to play in the Dream Team, in the Olympics. He had went publicly and said, Man, we just went back-to-back -back NBA Finals. I like my summers off. I don't think I'm going to be playing in it if they make it. Now, the NBA's got a problem. Michael Jordan said he don't want to play in the NBA. I mean, in the Olympics. This is why you got it. <laughs> this is why you spent $600 million. So, oh, Michael Jordan's going to play. <laughs> no doubt about that. Now, here comes the invisible hand. Boom, boom, boom. The corruption. Here comes that agent, David Falk. And let's not forget Isaiah cut his money and all the NBA agents because he's the president of the Players Union. Here he comes in like the snake. Michael's not going to play, but I can get Michael to play. But this is what we want, Rod Storm. Rod, is, what do you want? Look. You saw how Isaiah walked off that court, right? That's all everybody knows. Ask Dick. He knows. He's upset about it. That's right, I'm upset. Dick Embersall's upset. And... We want some people on the team that you probably haven't selected. Michael wants to play only if Scotty's playing with him. And let Scotty take that position. 
And we don't want Isaiah on that team. Or none of my players are going to feel like playing in the dream team. None of my clients. That means no Charles Barkley. No Patrick Ewing. None of them are going to play. Good luck playing without all the Nike players. So, that became obstacle number one. The snake came in the room and it was influencing Michael's decisions. So when Michael did that on the last dance and said, Rod Stone told me did I want to play when he talked to him? And he and I said, who's on the team? So once he told him, he said, oh, the guy you worried about, he's not going to be playing. Why did Michael Jordan elaborate on that? What did you say after he said that? Did you know he meant Isaiah? Because he knows the setup. That's why Rod already said, look, the guy you're thinking about, he's not playing. And this was way back before the decision was made. They already knew Isaiah Thomas was never going to be on the list. And this was the biggest corruption ever, and it was all about politics, not about basketball. So all of this lie about he would have definitely changed the energy in the room, and it would have just been different. You guys just played with Isaiah Thomas. You guys was laughing and joking with Isaiah in the locker room when Magic Johnson had his final All-Star game. You, Isaiah has never had no uncomfortableness when he was around you guys. This was all a lie. It was other political reasons involved that was trying to be more financial for them which end up leading to a lockout three years later because the NBA realized the real snake was David Falk. But they had to wait later before they got bit. And Isaiah was the only one protecting them from that snake. And when he retired and got out of the league and gave up president of the Players Association and Buck was the president. What happened? Strike. But we don't want to go that far ahead. Let's kind of speed it up to when they selected the 10 players now. Let's go that way. All right. They selected the 10. Charles, I mean, not Charles, but Clyde Drexler is upset. Let's stay here. Now, Bird didn't even want to do it. He thought this was for young people. Bird has got basically a broken back. So Bird is only going for namesake. Like, we got Larry Bird, you know, like, he was the guy from the 80s. Plus, like I told you, this was political. They wanted to have, like, a balance. They didn't want it to be a majority-dominant black team. They wanted to have some white players in there. This was part of the selection process that they never could tell you. So, you got to balance it out. No matter if they're as good as the black player or not, you got to have some white players that are good on the team too to show that we're not just sending all the black guys to the USA Dream Team. So we gonna have to send Larry and we gotta pick some more white people to balance this thing out. Chris Mullen. Oh well he's good enough to go. Let's just send Chris Mullen. And sending Chris Mullen over Clyde Drexler was an insult. Because they felt like, well, we already got Michael Jordan. That's, and he just beat Clyde. So 
Clyde don't deserve to go. So it's like they competed for a spot and Jordan put and beat him out. Now Mullen, you know, we got to have Mullen on the team. Patrick Ewan and David Robinson, they're the two best centers. They got to go. There was no problem. Nobody questioned Patrick Ewan and David Robinson's selection. Carl Malone, Charles Barkley. Nobody questioned Charles or Carl. Now, now that we're in this election and they made this, Magic will definitely try to take credit for stuff he don't do. That's just what he does. So everyone said, look, we got 11 months and Dave Gavitt, who is the president for the USA basketball team, Dave Gavitt said, we're going to take a lot of heat if we don't put Isaiah Thomas on this team. And he said, we're going to lose four of the players on this team, <laughs> including Michael Jordan, if we put Isaiah Thomas on this team. Because Falk will make it happen. He's that much of a prick. So Dave Gavitt said, went on the NBA selection show. And said in the next 11, 12 months, it could be another Scottie Pippen will emerge. Will it be Reggie Miller of Indiana? Or could it be Isaiah Thomas? USA president said that. It could be another Scottie Pippen will emerge. Are you out of your mind? You compared Isaiah Thomas to Scottie Pippen? It's insulting. He was a two-time NBA champion. Michael just won his second ring in a row. Unbelievable. Bird hadn't won a ring since 86. And been basically injury prone. But that wasn't the problem. This is Isaiah's class. This is where he played. This is where he was probably better than Magic Johnson as a point guard for the last four or five years. He not only should have been there. He should have been a co-captain if not captain. So at the end of, near the end of the NBA season, they made Clyde Drexler the pick for the final spot. And Christian Leitner got that collegiate spot, which made Shaquille O'Neal upset. But Leitner was definitely a better player than Shaquille O'Neal at that time. Now, all of this has happened. There's a lot of problems going on. Jack Mikulski is on there, and he's like, Isaiah, I know you're hot. Isaiah, I know you're hot. Isaiah was beyond hot. Because once again, someone was disrespecting Isaiah Thomas, telling him he wasn't good enough. You're not better than... John Stockton. So what Isaiah Thomas did to John Stockton and Detroit was not about John Stockton. He was playing against the NBA. He was playing against the league. He was playing against all those who said or doubted him. Isaiah went out on score like nobody's business. He went out to destroy John Stockton. Then he was doing it again before he was attacked. And Chuck Daly and Isaiah did not get along. 
and they strung this selection, the last two selections, because they knew it would be controversy. So they wanted to wait to the end of the season to do it. Or as close to the end of the season as possible. And when they made that decision, Chuck Daly and Isaiah's relationship would be forever strained. As it was influenced that Chuck Daly should step down. That's how the team felt. The team was like, look, we've been disrespected here. And as Pistons, we need to show of solidarity. Jack was an executive, an NBA executive on the, on the roster. How can the Detroit Pistons, Jack McCloskey, be an executive and you got Chuck Daly as the head coach, but it was out of their hands. And Jack tried to explain this to Isaiah. But they felt, okay, Chuck, don't coach that team. Chuck should have stepped down and fought for the players, fought for Isaiah. Lambeer felt that way. A lot of players felt that way on that team. Isaiah, I know, felt that way. And it didn't happen. Chuck wasn't going to step down as head coach of the Olympics. Dream team. So after the end of the 1992 season, Chuck Daly was out as P Pistons head coach. He was gone. He was done. That was it. Because it's either Isaiah or Chuck Daly at this point. And you're going to lose, Chuck. Chuck never coached the Detroit Pistons again. Because of his decision to not step down. It was done. So that snake, David Falk, did more damage than what the whole world would even know. So this was Rod Thorne's decision in the first place, him and Dick Ermbersall. Dick didn't want him there. Rod was like, I want Michael Jordan to play. And so does Dick Ambersaw. And the guy who owned Michael Jordan was David Falk. Michael was going to do whatever David Falk told him to do. That's just it, period. Michael Jordan led all these other players, Reggie Miller and all the other clients, to complain in 1995 so that he can get a contract to make him $33 million and he didn't get a luxury tax for those three years while he played in Chicago and got that $33 million a year. He wouldn't have to pay a luxury tax. It was all about Michael. But it was punishing the little guys in the league that was coming up. They didn't care. They didn't care what they deal was doing. Long as Michael got what Michael wanted. He was always about Michael and wasn't about the next guy. And that was the problem. And David Falk knew that. It's all about Michael and all the other guys I got. I just happen to have them. They just got to follow the same road as Michael. So all of this corruption blew up in their face because other people around the other NBA knew something's wrong. Why ain't Isaiah on the team? This guy's a 12-time NBA All-Star, two-time NBA champion. 
it didn't make sense. So everybody's been lying. The more they kept lying about it, so now they keep trying to come out with reasons to justify it, to villainize him, to say, see, nobody wanted to play with him. Then you got these enthusiasts as Will Born. Nobody wanted to play with him. Did you see that? You got all the, the whole team. Nobody wanted to play with him. It's like, go sit your little rat face self down somewhere. Getting all excited. Stupid idiot. You don't know what's going on out here. It wasn't the fact that nobody wanted to play with Isaiah. Chris Muller had no problems playing with Isaiah. Larry Bird didn't have a problem with playing with Isaiah. David Robinson, Patrick Ewan, even John Stockton didn't have a problem with playing with Isaiah. Barkley didn't have a problem with playing with Isaiah, and neither did Magic Johnson. None of these guys had a problem with playing with Isaiah. Carl had a problem with it, and this was only after the fact with the elbow situation. Before that, him and Carl had no problems. Carl had a problem with it then. Scotty had a problem with it because he don't like him. Jordan had a problem with it because he don't like him. Because they beat him all the time. whoop de woo So what? They play with him in the All-Star game and they have no problems. And then, check this out. <laughs> Clyde Drexler definitely didn't have a problem with playing with him. As he thought, he damn sure should have been there. So everything you heard from everybody else is they trying to lie. And they're using this show to try to villainize Isaiah to make it say, see, he deserved to be not on the team of the Dream Team. Like what, 30 years later? 30 years later, you still trying to make this guy a villain? Because he beat your white knight. All you did was you threw gasoline on a fire. And we gonna rally behind the truth. We gonna rally behind Isaiah. Somebody who is fighting the good fight. We ain't going to let the powers that be try to tear him down for being a true soldier who stood up for himself and did it the right way. He didn't buckle under corruption. He fought it. And that's why I stand by. West Side Chicago, stand up. Don't forget, you can support the page by hitting up that cash app. Carcino's the name on the cash app. And Detroit already know to stand up. They already been standing up. We ain't got to tell them. They already up. And that's all you need. <laughs> we out.